whether it is down syndrome charge association or pure robin sequence any syndrome could be diagnosed with just head to toe examination in newborn period welcome back to my channel in today's video we are going to learn head to toe examination in neonatal period do not skip anything watch till end let's start learn hi i am dr triya virani malde pediatrician and consultant neonatologist i'll be your guide for pediatric subject if you are new to my channel please do subscribe and give like to this video because lot is going to happen for pediatric on this channel before really starting a head to toe examination we need to see two important thing that is color of the newborn as well as the skin of the child in a color a uh, important finding is a cyanosis if there is a bluish discoloration which is seen in a newborn then we need to differentiate whether it is a central cyanosis or it is a peripheral cyanosis central cyanosis could be because of a congenital cyanotic heart disease or it could be a part of severe respiratory distress syndrome while acrocyanosis could be a physiological thing when the child is having a cold stress and is having a mild hypothermia the peripheral part could be cold and blue when the child is rewarm at that time this cyanosis should disappear after looking for this too we need to see the jaundice uh, unlikely from a pediatric or a adult the jaundice in a newborn has to be seen on the skin and to see the jaundice we need to press the skin on any bony prominence for some time and then we have to see the color if it is yellow then it means child is having a jaundice like this the blanching has to be done and the color of the child should be noticed this is not jaundice this is having jaundice and the extent of the jaundice has to be decided with the kremers classification in which face chest abdomen thigh leg and palm and sole has to be seen on the face it has to be seen on the nose on the chest it has to be seen on a sternum in abdomen it has to be seen just near to the umbilicus with the help of thumb thighs inner part of the thigh has to be blanched and for the sole and palm the pressure has to be given on sole and a palm and the blanching of the color has to be noticed after looking for the color of the child we need to see the skin in skin a vernix caseosa is a normal physiological finding which is seen in many newborn it disappears as the fetus mature and it is almost absent in a post term child while purpura is a tiny pinpoint hemorrhage could be seen any part of the body and it could be because of a thrombocytopenia while mottling is a sign of a poor perfusion where the web like formation is seen in all, all over the body it could be associated with the poor capillary refill time or it could be a, associated with tachycardia and the nibp which is abnormal while edema pedal edema could be a part of a lymph edema and a turner syndrome other pitting edema also could be seen in newborn because of a cardiac disorder or renal abnormalities while mongolian spot is a physiological finding it is seen in the back of the child and the buttocks of the child it is a dark blue bruise and it is seen in 90% of asian and blacks origin it disappear by 2 to 4 years of the life Colloidal baby is a baby which is covered by the parchment like membrane it is a disorder of the cornification and it is a congenital genetic disorders there could be a eversion of the lip and there could be a ectropion of the eye also it require extensive neonatal care while melia is a tiny white color bumps which is seen on the skin of the newborn it is also physiological nothing has to be done for that Erythema toxicum is a white color vesicle surrounded by the red base it is a part of a normal phenomena it, it is seen in many newborn after second day of life it is a tran transient and benign it will disappear by itself it will not require any kind of treatment after looking skin as well as the color of the newborn we need to really start with the head to toe examination in the head we need to see whether there is a presence of hydrocephalus or not gross hydrocephalus will be visible by the naked eye otherwise if there is a suspicion then the head circumference has to be plotted for the gestational age for specific gender boy or girl and then the if it is more than 97 centile it means it is hydrocephalus similarly if the very small head is there 
uh, the good clinician can make out with the eye that it could be a microcephaly otherwise the head circumference has to be again plotted on the chart and if it is a less than third centile it will give a diagnosis of microcephaly microcephaly could be because of a many syndrome i have already made a video on it the link is in the description box as well as there is i button while hydrocephalus could be a part of a torch as well as it could be a just a congenital aqueduct stenosis after looking for the shape and the size of the heart uh, head we need to see whether it is a premature fusion of the suture of the skull if it is present it is called a craniosynostosis for this also i have made a very good video if you not gone through it i suggest please go through it link is in the description box or no, coronal suture fusion like it is seen in this picture it is called a plagiocephaly if it is a bicoronal then it is a brachycephaly bb brachycephaly bicoronal suture fusion the the shape of the head will be like this if it is a metopic suture fusion like here it is a fuse then it is called trigonocephaly metopic trigono and the shape is also like this if it is a sagittal suture fusion it is called a scaphiocephaly or a dolichocephaly the head is like this if it is a tricephaly it means a tower shape head then it is easy to remember we need to remember the mnemonic tower shape cone shape funny it means coronal sphenofrontal and frontoethmoidal suture fusion and the head shape will be triangular like tower after looking for microcephaly hydrocephalus as well as craniosynostosis on the skin of the skull we need to see a very important thing is a caput succedum or it is a kefal hematoma caput succedum is a presence of edema of the scalp seen because of a dependent part due to vaginal delivery it's a soft swelling seen all, all over the scalp and it also crosses the suture line while kefal hematoma is a subperiosteal collection of the blood which is not present at the time of birth because collection of the blood may take some time it does not cross the suture line and there are two important thing which has to be remember because it can result in jaundice or this local collection of blood also can result in abscess or infection subgaleal hematoma is again a collection of the bulb blood beneath the galea aponeurosis of the scalp it could be also a part of a traumatic delivery or instrumentation after looking for the head we need to see the eyes of the child in eyes pupil cornea conjunctiva and iris has to be seen but a very important finding could be seen in a newborn is a subconjunctival hemorrhage that is because of a normal delivery and nothing has to be done for it just we have to provide a reassurance it will resolve after 2 to 4 weeks of the time to looking for the subconjunctival hemorrhage we need to see whether there is a presence of cataract or not not we need to Uh, see it with the torch as well as the naked eye it could be difficult at a time because newborn are having extreme photophobia so we need to see the presence of red reflex if there is a white reflex that it means there is a presence of cataract it could be congenital rubella syndrome also if there is a blue sclera like it is seen in this picture it could be a part of congenital glaucoma in a ear examination we need to see the position of the ear for the position of the ear we need to draw the line from the outer canthus to the occipital protuberance and we need to see whether the part of ear stays above the line or not at least one third of the ear should stay above that line if it is staying above that line showed in this picture then it is normal but nothing stays above the line all part of the ear is just below the line it means it is a low set ear it could be a part of many syndrome like down syndrome then we need to see whether the ear is proper or not here it is a microtia a very small ear with a very small meatus may not be a absence of completely external auditory meatus and here you can see there is complete absence of ear that is called anosia it could be a part of charge association many a times facial palsy is also associated with this anosia or microtia there could be a presence of skin tag in a preauricular part ear tags sometimes it is just idiopathic 
but many a times a uh, many renal malformations are associated with it so any newborn if you see with the ear tag has to be subjected for usg abdomen to rule out a congenital renal malformation in the nose we need to see just the patency of the nose by passing rt if there is a suspicion of coinal atresia a flaring of elanasi could be a part of a severe respiratory distress in the lip we need to see whether there is a presence of cleft lip like it is a here it is just a presence of cleft lip there is no cleft palate along with it it could be unilateral cleft palate with cleft lip with cleft palate like uh, like demonstrated in this picture it could be a bilateral cleft with with palate like uh, demonstrated in this picture after looking for the cleft lip and palate we need to see the mouth of the child in which we will see the presence of pearly white inclusion cyst at the junction of hard and soft palate this is normal physiological it will resolve by itself in 1 to 2 weeks presence of natural teeth could be disturbing for the parents so we need to see whether there is a presence of natural teeth if it is a firm and it does not disturb the breast feeding then nothing to be done but if it is a loose hanging then pedodentist opinion should be taken presence of oral thrush that means the oral cavity is covered with white color membrane sometimes it is milk spots also milk spots can be easily removed it does not bleed but while this part if we, we try to remove it it could bleed also this could be a part of opportunistic infection could be seen in a preterm babies or could be seen in a babies who are born to hiv positive mothers after looking for the oral cavity we need to see the mandible here a mandible is a very small and it is located back so it is called a micrognathia or a retrognathia in the neck we need to see a presence of sternocleido mastoid fibroma it is a hematoma which is uh, seen in the middle third of the sternomastoid muscle child may present with the neck swelling as a as well as the as the torticollis uh, religious physiotherapy could treat the disease and there is no other treatment apart from a physiotherapy webbing of neck and cystic fibroma webbing of neck could be part of a syndrome particularly turner syndrome or cystic fibroma is just uh, abnormality of the development of the lymphatic uh, lymphatics uh, lymphatic vessels which will result in a cystic fibroma this could also present in a patient who is having turner syndrome after looking for the head and neck we need to see the position of the child particularly arm here you can see the child this arm the baby is moving actively but the this arm is lying like this and it signifies the obs palsy it is seen in the paralysis of the arm because of nerve injuries to the c5 or 6 it could be a part of brachial plexus injuries or it could be a part of a clavicular fracture whenever there is a presence of obs palsy other birth trauma signs also should be seen in newborn then we need to count the finger of the child if there is one extra finger it means there is a polydactyly it could be a familial polydactyly or it could be a part of a syndrome many a times polydactyly is also associated with underlying renal abnormalities so this child this baby also has to be subjected for a evaluation of ultrasonography then there could be a syndactyly fusion of soft tissue of the fingers or bones or a nails if it is a fusion of bones and nails also then it could be a complex syndactyly and otherwise it is called simple syndactyly this could also be part of a syndrome particularly patau syndrome here you can see the rudimentary thumb and here you can see the absent radius whenever there is absence of radius tar syndrome thrombocytopenia and absent radius syndrome has to be kept in mind another important syndrome associated with absent radius and absent thumb is holterum syndrome so this two type of abnormality is there then child has to be subjected for echo as well as cbc to rule out a thrombocytopenia after looking at the thumbs and the finger we need to see the abdomen of the child in abdomen first and foremost we'll see the umbilical cord there will be a presence of two artery and one vein if the child is a 
less than 24 hours you can see the two artery and one vein another thing important thing is to be seen is umbilical discharge because it can cause a sepsis in newborn meconium stain cord can also signify that child has born through a meconium stain amniotic fluid two important visible swelling which is seen in the abdomen omphalocele is a basically a defect in the abdominal wall so herniation of the abdominal organ would occur but here it is present here covered with the sac and the attachment of the cord will be at the top or apex while gastrochysis there is abdominal wall defect but there is no covering and the umbilical call insertion is most of the time on the right side very simple thing that once the umbilical cord fall off there could be a presence of granuloma it is non-infective inflammation of the umbilical stump because if we will not treat this properly there could be a chances of secondary infection so whenever the newborn baby comes with the complaint of such kind of swelling it has to be subjected to the opinion most of the time common salt application or silver nitrate cauterization will resolve the problem we need to see whether there is abnormal abdominal distension or not here it is seen the abdominal skin is become shiny it is distended it could be because of NEC or intestinal obstruction due to congenital malformation of GID then in a back and spine we need to see the presence of meningomyelocele the bones of the spine do not completely form so there is a herniation of the meninges or a spinal cord through the defect if there is only a herniation of the mening meninges it is called a meningocele if there is a spinal cord as well as meninges it is called a meningomyelocele tough tough hair if there is a presence of tough tough hair there could be underlying spine problem spina bifida or tether code syndrome sacrococcygeal teratomas are a germ cell tumor and it will present as a starting from the tailbone or a sacrum of the child not here meningomyelocele will be present at the lumbosacral region while teratomas are very much down and there are very huge and there will be a presence of many tissue and organ in the teratomas last but not least is the genital and the anal opening in the genitals we need to see for the undescended taste is presence of hydrocyl inguinal hernia as well as hypospadias that's all about newborn head to toe examination wasn't it easy yes it was very easy so again your suggestions are welcome for the improvement please let me know what else you would like to learn from me till that time take care of yourself study hard and study smart